Are you ready to receive the word of God this morning? So, or I am preaching to Pastor, kindly stop it. Stop at 12.30. We need to leave. If that's your attitude, I'll preach an hour. If you're really excited, I'll preach only 30 minutes. Your deal. Okay. It gives us new life to know that you are standing firm in the Lord. How we thank God for you because of you we have great joy as we enter God's presence. Night and day, we pray earnestly for you, asking God to let us see you again to fill the gaps in your faith. May God our Father and our Lord Jesus bring us to you very soon. And may the Lord Make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow just as our love for you overflows. Last words of the chapter. May he, as a result, make your hearts strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father when our Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. Amen. After establishing the church and in a good gathering of Jews and Gentiles in Thessalonica, establish them in faith. Paul and Silas with Timothy go to Athens, to Macedonia. Athens. They are staying there and using this as a missionary station. And keep on trying to get word of mouth information about the ministry in Philippi as well as in Thessalonica. These two places were the hallmark of his ministry as we examine the scriptures. Paul has great joy in ministering to this home church as he established in Philippi and in the town of Thessalonica. There are two types of religion. The natural religion where people accept God the Father universally. There is another religion that is the revealed religion where Jesus Christ is the revelator and the one who attached people to God the Father. He himself was. He himself claimed as the Son of Man and that is who he was. So there is people who accepted the revealed religion through Jesus Christ and there are others who have the natural religion that is primarily the Jewish people. So in Thessalonica the, the speciality is these two groups come together and have solely teaching. The preaching of Apostle Paul and Timothy and Silas absolutely flourished, reached its purpose in the land of Thessalonica. A stable church was established. But as usual, persecution come, so they need to sail out and uh, save their lives. Maybe it was God's plan to really use them for other places. So he was in Athens, and he sent uh, Timothy and uh, uh, Timothy back to Thessalonians, Thessalonica and tried to really get a report. And he moved to Corinth and ministered there a year and a half. Then later, Timothy and uh, Silas joined him back in Athens. While he was in Corinth, Apostle Paul wrote this epistle, this letter to the believers in Thessalonica. And if we read this letter, This letter carries a lot of words and, and sentences showing his affection to these believers. As we read in chapter 3, verse 9, for what thanks can we render to God for you, 
for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God. See what it says in NLT. How we thank God for you because of you, we have great joy as we enter God's presence. So, when a man of God ministers in a place and establish a local community of believers, that is a center of joy for his life. It is the fruit of his ministry. He tells it point blank. There are no words I have to thank God for the joy. It is not ordinary joy, great joy. When we kneel down, when we minister in any place as we remember you. What I am trying to say is, home church of BCA, we have a culture. And that culture really comes through the teaching of the word of God by the men of God ministering in this local church. And we carry that joy. We may get many other opportunities to minister in many other places, but there is exceeding joy as we remember you. How the word of God is working in your life. How we come together as a part of the body of Christ. So, stay there, the BCA culture. What is that culture? We are going to expose it from the following verses. There is something more he adds. Night and day, we pray earnestly for you. Keep in mind, this is among those who are ministering from this pulpit. We not only speak the word of God, there is an ongoing responsibility to create an affectionate, passionate, love relationship with the body of believers. We preach and teach the word of God. And the effectiveness of the love is compelling. The men of God, those who bring the word of God to remain in praying for you night and day. And what is our prayer? We want to see you every time. I, I want to stay there. You, you, you see that. Night and day we pray earnestly for you. And what is the purpose? Asking God, let us see you again to fill the gaps in your faith. Why as a man of God, why as a pastor? I keep on emphasizing you. Don't miss the gathering of the saints. If there is somehow possibility, use your understanding, wisdom, and the ability, make it yourself available to the gathering of the saints. Or be in that process of getting you built together as a community of believers, as a dwelling place of God. Every time we have a scheduled time to come over here, why we cumble you? The reason is there are some gaps in your faith. I don't know exactly what is that gap. But when we are praying, when we are waiting upon the Lord, through the word, through our conversation, through the mind of Christ, through the spirit of God abiding in us, we are being reminded to identify when we come together as men of God, as ministers of the gospel, we have a responsibility to fill the gaps in your faith. Hope you understand this. The world is trying to create some spacings, some spaces in your spiritual journey. In your faith, the enemy tried to really, you know, weaken your faith. Oh, this is too much. Praying and, and, uh, and uh, worshiping, doing all the regular things, but things are not going in the right direction. Enemy tried to weaken through your circumstances. But 
the coming together when you are being built together to become a dwelling place of god the men of god exercising the responsibility through the anointing try to fill the gaps of your faith that the enemy try to wiggle in your life am i right every week we come together the word of god imparted here is to really fill up the gap that the enemy creates in your spiritual journey in your relationship with christ that is why it's a responsibility it is a trust it is a a, a task the spirit of god the great shepherd has trusted with the men of god who are called to be the ministers of the gospel or called to be pastors of the congregation this is a task we have to do after a lot of prayer that's what apostle paul reminded to the most beloved believers in the church of thessalonica the past he had good success the preaching of the gospel was very effective in philippi and thessalonica good congregation was established even though he has to run out of the city to spare his life from persecution but there is he left a bonding relationship his his ability to articulate the good news of the gospel had among them established strengthened them in faith there was such a mutual affection and esteem of each other through the preaching of the gospel the church the relationship the ministering men of god have with the body of believers is is an overflowing love relationship we can define it we were singing it while i was listening to the song endless love amazing love this all started with jesus christ there is a love that really compels us to really build you up and exchange in mutual esteem and mutual affection this overflowing love in the congregation of the believers that's why in his uh, apostolic addiction apostle paul is retelling grace and peace and all spiritual blessings nothing excluded all spiritual blessings comes to us from the father and the lord jesus christ he is seeing that mega a uh, a uh, store room of blessings the heavenly father opened through jesus christ to the body of believers body of believers it comes as a channel of grace and peace plus all the spiritual blessings to the body of believers that he has ministered in these places especially in philippi and thessalonica their welfare his desire to strengthen them encourage them and establish them in faith was a great ongoing responsibility you are all working in different uh, corporations carry lot of responsibility you understand what is a responsibility you know your supervisory task and your role in in your places of responsibility apostle paul understood it and as a as an apostle even though he has a handful of uh, evangelists like timothy and silas and uh, co travelers ministering the gospel he treated them with honor and respect and treated them as we are partners in the gospel and what is our goal the welfare of the body of believers strengthen them in their faith establish them and create that mutual love overflowing through the spirit of god living in them amen and remember this is the first letter apostle paul wrote while he was in corinth 
Even though he was visiting the church in Corinth, he wrote this letter to the believers in Thessalonica. He has, his heart, this church has really created a, an icon. He cannot take them out of his mind. The great... Uh, there are some specific things. This verse that we read, bring forth to us. His first point is, may the Lord Jesus Christ bring us to you very soon. That is in verse 11. First, he wants to see them and he wants to throw the word of God that the spirit of God gave to them so that he is able to fill the gaps in their faith life. Second is, he wants to flow his life. So he says, may the God our Father and our Lord Jesus brings us to you very soon. Praise God. This is one reason. Constantly we, you hear the uh, reminder, join, come together. As many times when we are planned to be together in the house of God because we get built together as a body of Christ where God dwells in. Second, your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow, just our love for you overflows. Coming together is a channel through which the love of God manifested or deposited in us gets visible. It's a visible exchange of the love of God and the love to one another. Get exchanged. Communicated without words even sometimes. Between one another and in the group. Just, it starts with the man of God ministering there. He points out and takes the responsibility. The center of God's love flowing in the church between one another. It not has to be a bare passive love. It is something that is flowing, streaming, gushing, purging between one another. In such a measure, it says, it has to flow the same way as our love for you overflows. So he is trying to put himself on the point telling, my love for you is overflowing believers in Thessalonica. Believers in Philip, our love for you, not only we preach the gospel, brought you into faith. We have an ongoing passion to perfect you as saints who carries a branding and wants the branding to be blemishless to the end. Praise God. I was meditating on this and I really got so excited in my spirit. Praise God. BCL Church, as men of God ministry here, I carry a responsibility to brand you without blemishes or oh, a nature, a character that you will be presentable when you stand before God the Father by Jesus Christ, His eternal grace. That is why I preach the word of God. That's the purpose of my preaching. It is an action of love. I labor in the word of God. I study the word of God and bring it to you. Through how the Spirit of God ministers to me. For one purpose. You had to be branded. See, corporations never allow a brand to be blemished. Praise God. Right there again? Amphenol will do anything. When somebody says Amphenol product is not good. It is not a product alone. It is the branding. Take anything. This manufacturer of this iPhone, Apple, if it is created some type of bad mass, they will invest everything to correct it. The body of Christ. We are branded by the grace of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And we are given a, a unchangeable faith in Jesus Christ to follow him.
So Jesus, help us to bring you soon to have that continuous fellowship. Second, let our love for one another overflow in the congregation. Just like the, flow, the love flows from the minister to the body of believers. Now, the closing point that he is trying to really present, this is the key words that I am trying to really give your undivided attention. May he, as a result, this continuous transforming process, filling your gaps in your faith. Second is, your love is overflowing to one another as our love overflows to you. As a result, there are three things viable, what is so critical in our faith life. Your faith, your as a result, make your heart strong, blameless, and holy. This is the branding attributes, characteristics, the gospel bring forth in the life of a believer. In your faith walk, you have to be strong. Second, you have to be blameless. And third, you have to be holy. These three traits, these characteristics are what make a believer different from others. In your faith life, this is what you examine in your day-to-day -day life. When Jesus Christ is going to come with his Holy people, praise God. He is referring to the, calm, the, the conclusive day. What we are all waiting for. The great union with Jesus Christ. If your faith life has to be strong, blameless, and be holy. This is an ongoing thing. This is a continuous transformation daily happening in our life. This is why we are together as a body of believers. Edify, encourage, build together and establish us so that gaps of faith life will be compensated. For what purpose? There is a day appointed. That day is appointed by God the Father. He sent his son Jesus Christ. With a great trumpet, he is going to descend. He is coming with all the saints dead in Christ. You know, the personally, the souls of those who die, their spirit is with Jesus Christ. Bible says in Philippians, absent from body is present with Christ. So, your spirit, as soon as the saints die, their spirit goes and rests with Jesus. On the day, the Father proclaims. For Jesus Christ to descend. He takes the spirit of all the dead in Christ. The saints. He comes down. He makes a trumpet sound. All the dead in Christ. Their spirit. Unite with the body. That are resting in. Graves. Cells. In seas. Wherever they are. Known and unknown places. This spirit will one by one. Instantaneously, as Jesus descends, joins with the mortals that are left over in this place, and they get an instantaneous transformation, and they are going to join with Jesus in the air. So there is a mighty army of Jesus and holy people coming down, and he sees these branded people. How is how they are branded? They are strong in faith. They are blameless in their walk. And they are called holy. These are the three characteristics that is going to who distinguish you to be taken out, transformed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, by Jesus Christ and the holy saints coming down in the air. 
they look at this brand of people. They are. They are. Oh, strong in faith. They are strong in faith. They hold on to their faith. They hold on to the promise. Faith is what Jesus said. He is going to do what he has said. Second is, they live a blameless life. I want to explain this in detail, but because of the lack of time, I am going to stop it here. My point is to let you know what is the purpose of the ministry. What is the purpose of a man of God? When we say, fill up, your, uh, fill up the gaps you have in your faith life, are you strong this morning? Are you blameless this morning? Are you holy before God this morning? This is not based on your measurements. It is measurements based on the branding that Jesus did uh, through his blood, uh, through his grace, uh, and you accepted it, and the Spirit of God is deposited in you that daily transform you. So, that day, when he comes down with his holy men, with his holy people, Hallelujah. His branded people will be taken by him. For what? They are going to be presented before God the Father. That's why he, Jesus did this branding to each one of you. May he as a result make your heart strong, blameless and holy as we stand before God. Our Father, when our Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. This is a very conclusive benediction at the same time renews our hope as a believer in Jesus Christ. Why we minister to you? Beloved, you have to be strong in faith. Beloved brothers and sisters, you have to be blameless in your faith life. Brothers and sisters, you have to be holy in your faith life. Don't try to reason it. Receive it as it is being taught to you, delivered to you. That's the only way when he appears with his holy people. These holy people are people who completed their race and went to be with the Lord through natural death or whatever type of Carrier they have to be with Jesus. They already completed their life. They cannot change it. If they were people of this branding, strong in faith, blameless and holy, as soon as they die, their spirit is with Jesus Christ. He is going to come in there, join their spirit with their mortals, and he is going to come with that great battalion of holy people. And people, those who are living in the Yes, to that time. It may happen in our time, while we may be in service, but this is the branding you need hold. Strong in faith, blameless, and holy. Then only you are going to be transformed into his likeness. In the language of Apostle John, he says, Beloved, we don't know who we are going to be, but when he appears, we are going to see him as he is, because he is going to give us a body that is able to see the glorious body of Jesus and recognize the glorious body of that God, Jesus Christ, gave to us at his return on that day of return. This morning, that is my goal. That is why I preach. That is what I sometimes get very excited the day is coming soon. The day is more closer than what we really think. It is sooner. It is going to be sooner. But are you ready? Are you strong in your faith this morning? Are you blameless this morning in your faith this morning? Examine yourself. Are you holy this morning in your faith life? Otherwise, you can have all the tradition. You can say, I am saved for 20 years. This is the branding that Jesus does so that you are presentable before God the Father on the day he appears with his holy people. Those who are dead in Christ, transformed and met in the air. With glorified body, he is going to come and really unite the servants, the people of God, the saints, living saints, 
instantly transformed. We are all going to meet the Lord with the holy people dead in Christ on the day of gathering. My preaching today is to really renew hope to you. Are you getting the message this morning? Praise God. Are you clear, hearing it clearly? Don't be misguided by anything else because this is what a pastor Paul taught to his beloved people in Church of Thessalonica. In any other church, he wrote about the coming of the Lord and prepared them again and again. All the teachings of the return of the Lord. He pointed towards the believers in the Church of Thessalonica. I am receiving it and delivering it to you with so much excitement and joy because I primarily take the responsibility and the call of God to minister in this place. I want to present you perfect in Christ Jesus. I cannot do it but the word of God and the spirit of God through continuous teaching and reminding this is what is going to happen. Anything out of what I said is not scriptural. This is the true word of God outlined by Apostle Paul. Are you waiting for his return? He once came to do away with sin, but he's coming for a second time to those who are eagerly waiting for him. Are you ready in your hope? Are you getting strengthened in your faith? Are you getting established? This morning, examine yourself. If there is any gap in your faith life, May this preaching, may this word I pray, fill it up and fill you into that branding level Jesus did by shedding his blood, giving you his spirit. And I am echoing his word today in this congregation. Get ready. The master is going to come with his holy people. Are you ready to be a part of that holy congregation that he is going to take and present him to God the Father? By his son, Jesus Christ, let us pray.